Good afternoon, I'm Karen Holmes Ward. It's a school deeply rooted in Boston's history and invested in the city's future. Established in 1964, UMass Boston is the city's only public research university, one of the most diverse universities in the nation. Some fast facts, UMass Boston, located on Columbia Point in Dorchester, serves more than 16,000 students from more than 130 countries around the world. And joining us now is UMass President Marty Meehan and UMass Boston Chancellor Emeritus, Dr. Keith Motley, who's also serving as a professor in the school's college of management. Welcome to you both. So grateful Great. to be here with you. Glad Great to, to see you. Here. President Meehan, uh, with the rising cost of higher education, uh, state schools are looking like very viable options for more uh, students. Uh, tell us about the benefits of a public university that are not directly financially related. Well, first of all, I th you said it in your opening, uh, you look at a place like UMass Boston, the diversity, the fact that you have people who attend from all over the world, the fact that you have that diversity, you have that relationship between faculty and, and, and uh, students, it's really a great relationship. The other thing is it's a research institution, so oftentimes graduate and undergraduate students get an opportunity to work with faculty on research projects. The other point that I would make, Karen, is that we have done a great job over the last decade or so of taking more money and putting into need-based financial aid. Mm -hmm. So even though the sticker price is significantly lower than many of the privates, we also provide significant financial aid so students have an opportunity to achieve their full potential. All right, now UMass Boston just dedicated its first residence hall, which opened in 2018 in honor of Chancellor Emeritus Motley and the former first lady of the campus, Angela Motley. The complex houses more than a thousand students on campus. Uh, Dr. Motley, you advocated for this dorm space. And so why is there a need for a, a residence hall at a traditional commuter college? And why do you see a dorm complex as a critical initiative? Has it, has it been a game changer for you? It's a tremendous game changer. Most, um, when parents are looking at colleges and universities, they have a mental model that most of the time includes residence halls of some sort. But the vanity of that would have been case enough. But the case that the president and I made and continue to make is that when students have the opportunity to live in proximity to where they're learning and have a real living and learning experience, then what happens is their academic performance goes up. Mm -hmm. So it's key and it's been noted and it's a data-driven kind of decision that we made because students are more productive, they're more engaged, they can leave the distressed mm -hmm. environment that most are coming from and that distress may not just be from uh, what's going down in their community. It, it be, might just be time management. It could be just the stress of getting to the right. campus on the team. And, and yes, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I hear that in the classroom. You know, I'm teaching um, uh, on the campus, and yeah. so I hear from students all the time, Chancellor, when are you going to fix the MBTA? Uh -oh, I'm sorry I'm late for the class. You know, the uh, the team was late. The bus it, was late. It took me an hour to get from That's Quincy right. to Boston. So now that they're living on campus, we hopefully can eradicate some of exactly. that stuff. Exactly. President Meehan, you recommended naming the complex after the Motleys. Well, first of all, Keith Motley and... Uh, Angela both are responsible for the transformation of that campus. If you physically go to UMass Boston today and compare to what it was 15, 20 years ago, it's been an extraordinary uh, transformation of the campus. And, you know, sometimes uh, I think it's important as an inspiration to our students to take two individuals like Keith and Angie and hold them up and, and recognize them because they're an inspiration for future generations of, of students and frankly uh, the community responded beautifully the board of trustees unanimously has supported it and I'm glad that we're doing it now sometimes universities wait until somebody passes yeah. away or yeah. we, we're gonna we had a great celebration uh, now in the present so I mean sure. Keith's uh, almost 90 year old mother was there it was just mm -hmm. uh, just Fantastic. an awesome tribute but it's an inspiration to future generations of students Dr. Miley I've known you uh, since our college days. <laughs> sure you at Northeastern, me right. at uh, BU, and I know that you've always been uh, passionate about education. What do you want your legacy at UMass to be? I want it to be that we were able to open doors for those students who 
typically may not have um, even felt that that opportunity was going to be part of their lives. You know, I experienced it as a first generation student along with my wife. And so we want access and opportunity, but at the highest standard of excellence. We don't want that to be a code word for less than. Mm -hmm. And so that's why those residence halls were important. Not only are they beautiful and they're out on the waterfront, but the entire university is a destination point for this city. Now, it's the only institution with its own presidential library and its own uh, Senate space with the Edward M. Kennedy Institute. Which is a beautiful space. You know, and it's out mm -hmm. on the waterfront, on the peninsula. It's an amazing place to be. Mm -hmm. uh, President Meehan, during the State of the City in January, Mayor Michelle Wu announced the start of the Year 13 program at Fenway High School. It's a partnership that's going to provide uh, a fifth year at the school while earning college a credit. Tell us how programs like this one and, and, and Steps for Success, a program we're going to talk about in our next uh, segment, are going to share more about uh, fit into the school's new strategic plan. Yeah, we're going to expand early college opportunities for students in the city of Boston. It's a great opportunity because, number one, it shows students that they can compete and do well doing college work, number one, and that's really important, particularly uh, for uh, young people in our schools. The other thing is, if somebody gets 30 credits, it's going to be a lot less expensive for them to go to college in the long run, so you can save money as well. So we are in the process working with Governor Healy and others in state government to expand what we're doing across the Commonwealth, but in particular with UMass Boston and the City of Boston school systems. You talked a little bit earlier about uh, sticker shock. Um, President Meehan, yeah. let's talk about the, the cost of higher education. Uh, the UMass system um, awarded $395 million in university-generated financial aid this academic year, $22 million more than last year. Yay, that's all good. But the Board of Trustees also uh, approved another tuition hike. So why is tuition continuing to rise and what else is being done to lower the costs for students? Well, first of all, inflation this year is at a 40-year high, so all of the costs, personnel costs, purchasing things have all gone up significantly higher than 2.5%. One of the things we do when the tuition goes up, we take 20 to 30% of that and put it into more need-based financial aid. In other words, the need-based financial aid that you mentioned, $380 million, that comes from tuition and fees and other revenue that comes in. What can be done? We're trying as a system to purchase uh, for less money. We're looking to shared services to try to cut expenses wherever we can and, and to get more efficient wherever we can. The challenge, of course, is that we're, in a, we're a people business and mm -hmm. when, when inflation is at a 40-year high, we have to pay our people more and that costs more yeah. money. So yeah. the challenge is to, to make sure need-based financial aid is as high as it possibly can be. Let's uh, end the segment with uh, Dr. Motley. Tell us your wish for the future of UMass Boston. My wish is that um, we are in that conversation when people from all around the world think about Boston, they think about its public research university as an incredible learning option for them. Understanding that you can come to an international city like Boston, have some of the greatest scholars in the world working with you every day and that learning uh, can go both ways and it's something that can translate well wherever you go in the world. We're a global university sitting in a world-class city um, and our research is just incredible. So we're very, very excited about um, being present and being here for the times. All right. For All these right. times. President, President Meehan, thank you very much. Dr. Motley, congratulations to you and uh, your bride on the naming thank of the complex so much, Kim. over at UMass. Uh, thanks, thanks, Kim. thanks to you both for joining us today thank and you. for your continued work in higher education.